In my last video, I went over the basic usage of Plover. In this video, I will finish off the rest and showcase some of the plugins I like to use with Plover. So last time, I went over Plover's GUI, but I'll now go over some of the Plover commands you can call with strokes. One of the most frequently asked questions by folks trying to learn Plover is whether there is a hotkey for turning Plover on and off. If you're using an N key rollover keyboard, it can be annoying having to open the Plover window, turn off Plover, and then proceed with regular typing. Unfortunately, there isn't a global keyboard shortcut to turn Plover on and off, but there is a way to invoke a command that toggles Plover with a steno stroke. If you define an entry as Plover toggle, writing it will turn Plover on and off. Now, this is the default stroke for this command. Think of it like ploggle for Plover toggle. Check it out. Even with Plover disabled, it will still work. Now, if you're trying to look up a word, it's still tedious having to open the main Plover window and click the lookup tool, but you can define an entry as Plover lookup to open it. There isn't a default stroke for this, but personally, I use plup with an asterisk for Plover lookup. I've also seen it abbreviated as pluk or ploop, which I think are amusing outlines. Next, there is the command to open the add translation window. Define a stroke as Plover add translation, or use the default outline dubbed for dictionary update. If you've written an untranslation just before opening the dictionary update window, the strokes field will automatically be filled in with whatever you've just written. If you don't want to move your mouse, just tab to the next field and fill in the translation you want. Alternatively, if you fingerspell a word and then open the dictionary update window, the translation field will instead be filled in. Shift tab into the previous field and write your strokes there. The last Plover command I like to use is Plover focus, which will open the main window. I use this stroke, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce, but it is reminiscent of one of the briefs for focus. A list of all the different Plover commands can be found in the dictionary format page, which I've linked in the description. Next, I'll go over some plugins. Like I said in my last video, you shouldn't be blindly installing new plugins, but they're so useful that if you're not using any, I think you're just frankly missing out. Here are some trusted plugins I can recommend. They're used by myself and many others in the Plover community and were created by trusted members. All of these plugins are in the plugins manager, so it's simply just a matter of selecting the plugin you want and pressing install. Just make sure to restart Plover afterwards. Now, the number one plugin I suggest for learners is Spectralexer. It analyzes your dictionaries and parses them with Plover theory. This is an example of how it breaks down outlines. It is incredibly helpful for beginners, and I'd completely recommend using this over the default lookup tool for tricky words. It's easier to spot misstrokes, discover rules that you had not known about, and just be able to recall words easier. Spectralexer will also follow the outlines as you write them and show them in a diagram. Though if you want a tool that just shows what strokes you are pressing, there is the Plover Layout Display plugin. The default appearance of which isn't the most exciting, but you can customize it pretty easily. I've linked below the wiki, which has several downloadable presets you can import into the plugin. I have also included my photography layout in the description. To import a layout file, just press the button on the right and select the file you want. Now, unfortunately, you cannot actually differentiate between the different asterisk or number keys. So when I press one asterisk key, it looks like all the different asterisk keys are being pressed, which isn't necessarily happening. Another plugin I think is great to have is the Plover WPM meter. Sometimes it's just nice to know how fast you're writing. What I like about this plugin is that it has many different modes for the different definitions of what a word is. Most online typing sites define five characters as a word, which this plugin has. The plugin also has the NCRA definition of 1.4 syllables per word, which is used by professional stenographers. This plugin also comes with a strokes meter, which measures how short you write in strokes per word. A smaller number means fewer strokes per word, while a larger number would imply writing out more and using fewer briefs and less phrasing. On the subject of writing shorter, it can be hard to learn new briefs that are already in main.json. It's not always ideal to have the suggestions tool open. And for this, there is the Plover Clippy plugin, which outputs only more efficient suggestions to a text file you can review later. This plugin is great as it records opportunities to write words and phrases in fewer strokes. After installing it and enabling it in configuration, a new text file will be created in Plover's config folder. You can access this by going to File, Open Config Folder. 
upon which there will be a file called clippy.txt. There's also a fork of Plover Clippy called Plover Clippy 2, which is more extensible and customizable. Another text file based plugin that I find really neat is Tapey Tape. It is Plover's paper tape, except printed to a text file with Clippy like suggestions on the side. It also prints symbols on the side indicating how long you're hesitating on a word. Although this is a text file, there are programs you can use to view it live as it updates. All of these plugins are really useful for learning, but plugins can also be really fun. Plover Fancy Text adds support for various different text formatting. It transforms the text coming out from Plover with various different modes, which are really quite silly. My favorites include sarcasm text, small caps, zalgo, handwriting, and full width. But these are only half the modes available. You can switch modes with commands you can assign to strokes, and there are also retroactive commands, which are incredibly convenient. I've gone through several plugins already in fair amounts of detail, but there are still so many plugins left that I must mention, so I'll go over them fairly quickly. Plover Current Time allows you to write the current date or time with a stroke. The format is completely customizable. Plover Stitching adds a stitching operator so you can write words with hyphens or really any character between letters. It also has a retroactive command to do this easily. Plover Retro Surround makes it possible to add retroactive commands to surround the last few words with any string of characters. I use it with parentheses and quotes. Plover VLC commands lets you control VLC with steno strokes. You can pause, rewind, and fast forward all with different strokes. And lastly, Plover Last Translation adds a command to repeat the last translation, even if it was multiple strokes. The array of plugins I use will always evolve, so I may create an online list at some point. But all of these plugins I've mentioned will always be the ones I recommend, as they are incredibly useful. Now two plugins I have not gone over just yet are the Python and Modal Dictionaries plugins. All they really do is just extend Plover support for certain dictionary formats, but they add so much to Plover's functionality that I may make a video just on these two plugins in the future. I hope this video has been helpful, and let me know in the comments which plugins you like to use.